with us and I will show you what we do. Windows provides an SDK for various platforms which provides your app with email localization. Um, our SDK is for everybody, so there are lots of companies using the SDK, but there are a lot of students, for example, using the SDK too. Um, we, our SDK allows you to do pretty much everything, so we don't force some user experience like Google Maps or Twitter. So you can customize the colors of the map, but you can even choose to not show the map at all. Um, also, we provide many features on top of just localization. For example, um, routing is built into the SDK, and we also handle all the uh, server-side stuff, so if you choose to to update your map, we automatically push the changes to the phones. When I when I joined the company, I was was thinking a lot about what users can do with an SDK that provides email localization. And of course, the it's obvious that you can guide the user through a specific venue. So, for example. Lots of customers um, want to build an app for a museum, for example. But I think there's a lot more you can do. So for example, we are partnering with another big company which is into augmented reality. And we plan to do a prototype which includes our SDK in the Stephansdom. So if you're in the Stephansdom, and you look around like like you're used to, for example, there's the Wikitude app. When you're outside, you can look around and see what places are around you. And the same would be possible using our SDK in, for example, the Stephansdom. So you see which um, painting you're looking at, for example. I think it's also possible to create games with the localization. There are lots of games using GPS, like Ingress, or Run Zombie, or Gear Caching. I think all that is possible using the local localization too. Another big uh, thing a lot of our customers are into is commerce, commerce and sales. So they want to track their users, they want to know where most customers are, whatever. And another thing, home automation, maybe the lights turn on when you um, enter a room, for example, or the, the music follows you through your flat. Okay, how <coughs> it works? It all starts with a one-time measurement process. So you install our software, which I will show you later, on your computer and walk around your building and we measure the uh, signals around you. And that's pretty much everything you need. Um, there's two types of indoor localization which we provide the first thing which was the first fir first thing we provided is the indoor lo localization using Wi-Fi signals so we measure the Wi-Fi signals and their strength and based on that we can tell you where you are this is about the 5 meter accuracy or better and we call that fingerprint but a lot of customers didn't want to walk through the whole building, like a museum could be pretty large, and they don't want to measure at all, they just want to have indoor localization 
and they don't need five meters accuracy. They just want to know in which room a user is. So we came up with what we call proximity. It's based on Bluetooth this time. Um, you buy so-called Bluetooth beacons. They are really small. You can put them under a table, on the walls, whatever. And based on that, we can tell you where the users are. As I said, that's only room level accuracy at the moment, but the advantages um, works on iOS too. The problem with iOS is that Apple for some reason decided not to give an app access to Wi-Fi data. So the, the fingerprinting process I mentioned earlier is not possible. Um, yeah. In the future, we plan to uh, release a mix of the two methods mentioned. Um, so you are still using the Bluetooth beacons, so it works on all platforms. But it's not only room level accuracy, but the, the same accuracy as for fingerprinting, so better than five meters. Okay, so that's our software I mentioned earlier. In this case, it shows an um, so-called heat map. Um, this is a heat map just for one uh, Wi-Fi access point. So you can see the, where the white color is. Uh, the signal strength is the best, and blue is the worst. So you can already imagine that you, based on that, you can say where the user could be, but it's not that easy. Um, that's the software again with a bigger building, that's the Vespa node. Um, you can see in the previous screenshot, you can see little dots across the map. That's the measurement, so you, at each of these points, you have to say, I'm here, and now measure the signal. Yeah, that's our tool. <coughs> you can do various things with that. It's like a content management system, so you can tell us where the walls are, you can tell us where some kind of point of interest is, so for example, which um, which store is in a specific room and we can tell you later on on the phone if a user entered this store. Okay, now let's go to some code. It's really easy to include our SDK. So you can see that's literally 10 lines of code and that's everything you need um, in previous releases of our SDK you would have to write like 100 lines of code just for the same result like these um, 10 lines of code mm. yeah it's it looks really easy in in this specific configuration, but of course you can do everything with it. Like I mentioned earlier, you can change the colors, you can whatever. Um, so with these lines of code, you get approximately this app. So it's really just the, the map and the user position. The user position is the little blue dot in the upper right. Um, I think that's everything you need to build an app. You can choose to, to extend the map view, for example, with our own demo application. We included some, like on the right side, the a floor chooser so the user can still 
choose to view another floor if he's interested in, in this floor. Um, you can also see the routing in action. It's the blue line. This everything everything you can see here is provided by our SDK. How do you map the map? Map the map? Yeah, map the map. Uh, I mean, not scale and in terms of position. In terms of scale and position. And okay. How is this happening? So, back to our software, you have to provide us the the floor plan. So, if, like what you can see here. Um, but. also draw the map yourself so it doesn't matter what the map looks like we don't care about that you just upload upload your a picture of your of your building um, into our software and that's it does that answer your question how does the picture get in, into the android app is, okay. it, is it just a picture within the app or is it a real HTML okay. description? Uh, yeah, as so as graphics, whatever. Mm -hmm. You upload the picture into our software, you can see here, and put in the walls, like I mentioned earlier, the zones, the, uh, the stores, sorry, and measure the building, and then you upload it to our server. Then you get the building ID, which you put in here uh, at line. And we care about the downloading of the map and displaying it. So each map is not on my device, but gets loaded from your server. Exactly. Okay. But of course, we also cache the, the map. Yes. So. And like I mentioned earlier, um, if you update the map using our software, and the user has already cached the previous version of the map, we automatically download the new version in the background and then display it. Okay. Yeah. As you can see here, we provide an, a fragment, Android fragment. I think that's the easiest way you can include um, or SDK in your app, of course, you can also get a view if you don't want to use a fragment activity. But I think a fragment should be fine for you. Yep. Okay. I think Helmut mentioned it earlier. We are part of the hackathon tomorrow. We also have a special prize for the best Kindle set. So I hope to see some of you guys tomorrow and maybe, yeah, maybe you get a special prize. That's it, thanks. Do you have any questions? And when, when I'm getting the patient by measuring the wiper signals, um, did you try I assume that you have had multiple access points to triangulate the position somehow. Mm -hmm. What's the performance like if you have only one or two access points? Can yeah. you use this solution or...? Um, one or two access points is not enough for us, but um, we know from our own experience that even if you can only see two access points, there are still like three more you can't see. And even if, if the signal strength is really bad, we can still use it in our algorithm. So at in most places there's still five to 10 access points, which is enough. Okay. And in case there's really no access point or just one access point for whatever reason. Um, you can use the Bluetooth solution. Yeah. Does it work offline or do you still need an internet connection too? Okay. Uh, I 
I've mentioned earlier, we cache the map. So after downloading it, it once, you can use it offline. But there's also the option to include the map of the building right into your app. So you just put it in your assets folder and <coughs> then you can use it offline and the user never has to connect to the internet. For the Bluetooth proximity, um, because you, you can like make something like an RSSI measurement. How precise is it approximately? The proximity solution? Yes. Okay. Um, at the moment, it's room level accuracy, or depending on uh, how big the room is. So in this case, we could tell you if you are in the one half of the room or the other half, half. But as I mentioned earlier, we are working on, a, on an improved version of the proximity uh, solution, which will provide better than five meter accuracy. And does it uh, precisely recognize in which floor you are? Mm -hmm. Yes, the determining the, the correct floor is, I think, one of the hardest parts of the whole algorithm. Um, some phones have like pressure sensors, which makes it a lot easier to, to recognize the, the correct floor. But for example, at Bespanhof, if you know the venue, um, there's three floors, but I think two of them are like not distinct from each other. But but there's a the hole a hole in the one floor leading into the other floor, and we still get the floor right in this case, which is a lot harder than if you have uh, a normal building. But if you measure the air pressure, okay, if the air pressure yeah. sensor, yeah. Uh, how do you calibrate it? Because the air pressure, okay, it depends on 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 the floor, but it also changes with the uh, with yeah. the weather. So at one day, the air pressure in the first floor is the same as it would be tomorrow at the other yeah. floor. That's absolutely correct. So there's the one thing you can do is measure it once, and then try to um, find out what is on the other day. But uh, the thing we do is, uh, you can see it relative. So you never have to measure the, the air pressure at one point, but you just, if a user walks into a building, you know the, the air pressure is like, this now, mm. and then if he walks up, you can Maybe. see that it changes drastically, and then you know he's uh, one floor up. No. Other questions? Yeah, that's right. The problem with Wi-Fi is you don't have uh, control over all access points in some cases, like in universities. Um, you don't control the access points, so they could change, uh, uh, they could move one device from one room to another room, or they could shut it down. That's right. That's a problem. Um, If you don't shut down all the access points at once, the localization still works. Of course, the accuracy decreases. But I mean, uh, let's say I have my, my own routers. Yeah. Uh, 
Normally you don't. Um, you ju we just use every signal we can get, yeah. but you can say use only this access point, use only that access point. But I wouldn't recommend it. If you want to circumvent such problems like shutting down an access point, you can use the Bluetooth solution again because then you have your own beat, uh, Bluetooth standards and you can put them wherever you want and if you move them you know that and you can update the building the map Proximity solution is still in private beta, okay. so you can sign up for that or ask me. Uh, Tomorrow at the hackathon, I will provide you an API key and a building ID, so you can just start hacking without worrying about the measurement stuff. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Thanks for your attention. Have a nice weekend.